Here are the top stories for today, the 3rd of May, 2022. President Duterte finally orders to stop the operations of Isabong in the country. Filipino Muslims gathered to observe Idil Fitir or the end of Ramadan as President Duterte calls them to be models of goodwill and compassion for humanity. The Kamalek says it may declare the winners of the senatorial and partidist group race a week after the May 9 elections. And the Department of Justice warns that the witnesses who recanted their testimonies against Senator Laila de Lima may be liable for perjury. Good day, I am William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. No more isabong in the country. This as President Rodrigo Duterte ordered for its immediate termination following the still unresolved disappearance of some aficionados in the country. The president earlier rejected calls to suspend isabong operations since the government is earning millions of pesos from the betting game. But he eventually expressed openness to the calls due to the apparent social problem involving aficionados and their family. Loud and very clear to me that uh, it was working against the, our, our, our values. I will sign the papers uh, which would consist one, actually, but it was not, it was just an, a verbal order given by me to Secretary uh, Anio to conduct a survey kung ano talaga the impact, the social impact of isabong upon the Filipino people. President Rodrigo Duterte reiterates that the government is working to have peaceful elections. The president assured that the upcoming polls will be free of violence and intimidation and that the voters will be able to exercise their right to vote and choose whoever they want to vote for. We will have an orderly, clean and honest election. I urge uh, the government to be conscious of this because everybody would be working towards this end. Uh, I would emphasize that uh, the military and the police focus uh, on this event because we said we, we want an honest election. My guarantee to the nation is that it is not really that it will happen or it can happen, but coming uh, the trabajo sa governo. Uh, sinasabi ko lang as president, uh, I guarantee, ako uh, guarantor ako, that we will do everything to ensure that the election is uh, free from violence and that people are not intimidated in any way to exercise the right to vote. Less than a week before the May 9, 2022 elections, President Rodrigo Duterte has reiterated that he is not bent on endorsing any presidential candidate. In his Talk to the People program aired this morning, the president dismissed speculations that he might announce his support for his preferred successor in the coming days. Despite the recent statements of his son and political party, Duterte insisted that he has no plan to back the candidacy of any presidential aspirant. The reason why I am not supporting any candidate by inference or implied or indirect, wala ako wag kayong maniwala dyan na kasi dahil ay nagpunta ako doon that I raised the hands of some candidates. It does not include all because I do not know them. Pero ulitin ko, you better disabuse your minds about the getting into guesses and uh, assumptions. Wala. Wala akong kandidato pagka-presidente ngayon hanggang Disyembre para ma-ano ninyo na... Moreover, Duterte asked his cabinet to stay neutral and refrain from endorsing any candidate. 
He gave the advice to his cabinet to avoid further speculations that he is supporting a particular presidential candidate. Na sinabi ko, kung maari lang, kayo mag-remain neutral lang rin. Kung may kandidato ka, just keep it to yourself and vote. But let us avoid endorsing any candidate so that uh, there will be no uh, second guesses or implications that we are supporting this candidate or that candidate. More areas in the country have been placed under the lowest alert level one status. Acting Presidential Spokesperson and Communications Secretary Martin Andenar said the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases approved the recommendation to place Luzon, Nueva Vizcaya, and Misamis Occidental under alert level one from May 3 to 15. Meanwhile, other component cities and municipalities are also placed under Alert Level 1, such as Talisay City in Cebu, Antipas in North Cotabato, and Banga in South Cotabato. President Rodrigo Duterte urges Filipinos to get vaccinated before voting to be protected from the virus. He urges those who are eligible and have not yet been inoculated with a booster shot to avail of the life-saving COVID-19 vaccines. Because it's election time. There will be a crowding again of people congregating and uh, it would be good to have the boosters uh, shots before uh, you go out and mix with the crowd. Okay lang naman kasi pag meron ka na actually. Hindi naman sabihin, it's not a 100% guarantee that uh, there will be no reinfection. But Malayo, ay, uh, kung meron man, talagang mahina yung ano mo, constitution mo, lalo ng yung immune system mo. But if you are normal ka lang, hindi ka magsakit, hindi ka masakitin, uh, it can protect you and you can vote there uh, without uh, uh, any sense the worry about uh, getting a, an infection again. Still ahead, President Duterte joins the Muslim community in celebrating Idil Fitir. The Kamalek says it may declare winning senatorial bets and party list groups a week after the May 9 elections. We'll be back after a quick break. Keep it here on the PNA Newsroom. The COVID-19 pandemic has greatly changed our lives for the worse. Lives and jobs were lost and economies reached a meltdown. Thanks to the arrival of safe and effective vaccines, we are one step closer to normalcy. It's time to do our part, get vaccinated for our safety and for our recovery. If you are there in that community, go there and have yourself vaccinated by any of the vaccines available. They are all potent, they are all uh, effective. I would like to appeal to all our Kababayans, please get vaccinated against COVID-19 and be the government partner in preventing further spread of the disease. I encourage you to get vaccinated as soon as possible time. These vaccines are safe and they are the key to reopening our society. The need for international solidarity and cooperation cannot be made clearer than this pandemic because everyone is safe. No one is safe globally until everybody is safe. Vaccines work.
President Rodrigo Duterte expressed hope that Muslims now feel refreshed and have renewed their strength during the festive conclusion of the holy month of Ramadan. In his Adil Fitr message, the president called on the Filipino Muslim community to not only be models of the Islamic faith but also of goodwill and compassion for all of humanity. Meanwhile, Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana said this year's Adil Al Fitir is an appropriate time to promote the spirit of love, reconciliation, and social healing among Filipinos of all faiths. And for National Commission on Muslim Filipinos or NCMF Commissioner Jamal Munib, the celebration of Idil Al Fitir is an opportunity to promote the COVID 19 vaccination program of the government. He said the commission will now resume its vaccination campaign. At yan po ay uh, bilang commissioner ng religious sector sa ulamang sector na ipaliwanag ko na po sa kanila ang tungkol sa pagbakuna at uh, unti-unti na po nawawala yung mga maling pagkaintindi o kayong mga misconception about sa kwan, about sa mga pagbabakuna, especially yung mga fake news na lumalabas o yung misconception about the kwan, halal ba siya o hindi siya halal, al alhamdulillah na ipaliwanag na po natin sa kanila Ito po ay halal na po dahil dumaan po siya sa proseso na nagiging halal na po siya na pwede na po gamitin ng Muslim. Let us take a look at how our Muslim brothers and sisters in Marawi City celebrated Idil Fitr or the Feast of Breaking the Fast in this report of Claire Gigge. With the celebration of the last day of Ramadan this year, Muslim faithful flocked to the Grand Mosque in Marawi City after its doors reopened for Eid. Ever since the firefight happened in the year 2017, which was then followed by the COVID-19 pandemic, this is the first time that said mosque welcomed worshippers for the holy occasion. According to the visitors, they are happy because for the past years, they were not allowed to visit mosques in Ground Zero. We're so very happy that last year Pag-pray kami dito sa center, it's been a long time na hindi kami nakapunta dito. First, the previous years na sarado yung mosque is very, ano kami, naninibago yung kasi nasanay kami na every eat talaga, nasa labas kami or nagpo-pray kami sa, ano, sa mga masjid dito sa Ground Zero. Maraming, ano, uh, naranasan noon yung year, tapos hindi kami makapunta dito kasi bawal yun. Tapos ngayon, Alhamdulillah dahil nakapag-ano kami, nakapag-samoyan kami dito. Excited lang sa pagpunta dito, gumanda na siya. Meanwhile, Grand Mosque Secretary of the Board Ibrahim Mansungayan Pangarungan shared how delighted they were for this year's Eid because after five years of having a closed mosque, this finally reopened for the last day of Ramadan. So everybody is happy, no? Very thankful to the government we have this, no? At nakita natin ngayon ng pagsimba ay may nahon, no? Kami din ay nagpapasalamat sa inyo, sa tulong nyo, parating nyo sa buong mundo. Um, nangyari ngayon sa Ground Zero ng Marawi City. For now, the Grand Mosque is not yet open for the regular prayer schedule, but administrators continuously call to government for it to totally open. Aside from the Grand Mosque, the public witnessed as well the opening of the White Mosque in Barangay Lumbaka, Madaya, which is also one of the mosques rehabilitated by the government with the help of private donors. While there was likewise a congregational prayer at the golf course of the MSU main campus in the same city. For PNA Newsroom, Claire Gigge of the Philippine Information Agency, Lanao del Sur. The winners of the senatorial and party list contests may likely be proclaimed a week after the May 9 elections. Kamala Commissioner George Irwin Garcia said the poll body can already proclaim the senators or party list winners on May 16 at the latest, as the canvassing of results may end by May 15. Garcia is also certain that the winners in the local elections will be known hours after the voting precincts have closed. Government troops in Lano del Sur are preparing for their security duties in the May 9 elections even as they have ongoing operations against terrorist groups. Here's our report from Marita Mawahe. Troopers of the 5th Infantry Battalion on Monday underwent a general inspection of all mission essential equipment as part of the unit's preparation for the May 9 national and local elections. 
5th IB Commander Lt. Col. Romulo Sarabara reminded the troops of the non-partisan role of the Army during elections and the need to secure the voting centers at all costs. Despite ongoing combat operations, he said they made extensive preparations for the upcoming elections. In June last year, the 5th IB was deployed in Lano del Sur and was tasked to destroy the New People's Army and the ISIS-inspired Daula Islamia Maute group in its jurisdiction. Since then, it has launched combat operations in the 15 towns of Lano del Sur that it has operational jurisdiction. Meanwhile, the province of Negros Oriental will receive an additional 175 police personnel from the Police Regional Office Central Visayas to augment the current security forces who will be deployed for poll duty on May 9. Provincial Police Director Colonel Hermano Maliari said police personnel will be assigned to all polling centers, station duty, security details during the delivery of vote counting machines, and election paraphernalia and quick reaction teams in strategic locations. The Philippine Army will also be deploying its own troops as augmentation to the police. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Marita Moahe. The Department of Justice will take up the move by a former prison official to recant his testimony that implicated jailed Senator Laila de Lima in the illegal drug trade. DOJ Secretary Menardo Guevara said two conflicting claims under oath potentially make one of the declarants liable for perjury. Guevara said he will discuss with prosecutors the statement of Rafael Ragos, a former Bureau of Corrections chief, who claimed he was coerced by former DOJ Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre II to testify against De Lima. Ragos was the second witness to take back a previous testimony against De Lima. In a September 2016 sworn statement, Ragos said that he, along with former NBI agent Jovencio Ablen Jr., delivered a black bag containing 5 million pesos to Ronnie Dayan, the senator's former bodyguard at her residence. Earlier, drug dealer Kerwin Espinosa recanted his statements that the senator financed her campaign in 2016 using hush money from convicts. He was also dropped from the Witness Protection Program following various offenses, including attempted escape from the NBI detention. In our business news, the country's manufacturing performance in April 2022 reached its highest peak with the easing of pandemic restrictions. S&P Global Philippines reported on Monday that the Purchasing Managers Index hit 54.3 in April this year from a score of 53.2 in March. Manufacturing performance last month was at the highest since November 2017. S&P Global said the improvement in manufacturing conditions was supported by increased output and new orders. On the other hand, the conflict between Russia and Ukraine is driving higher shipping costs and slowing down demand from international markets. Meanwhile, Philippine-based manufacturers ended a 25-month period of job shedding as April data showed a stabilized workforce. Business confidence is also at a four-month high in April as manufacturers are optimistic due to improvement in conditions related to the pandemic, stronger demand conditions, and rising output in the coming months. More stories from the newsroom. The government's housing authority prepares to turn over its programs and plans to the next administration. And the Duterte Legacy Caravan serves over a thousand residents in Kalinga. Details ahead, stay with the PNA Newsroom. Follow me, Jonas Paul, para sa kampanyang Disiplina Muna na pinangungunahan ng DILG. Bakit ba kailangan magparehistro sa pagpababakuna laban sa COVID-19? Mahalaga magparehistro dahil ito ang unang step sa pagpababakuna laban sa COVID-19. May tatlong pamamaraan upang makapagrehistro ang isang Pilipino na nais mabakunahan. Una, ang online registration sa inyong local government unit o LGU. Pangalawa, ang pagpunta sa mga vaccination centers at pagkuha ng registration form. At pakikipag-ugnayan sa mga pinuno ng barangay o sa mga barangay health center. Tandaan, online, 
sa mga vaccination site o sa mga barangay health centers ang pagpaparehistro sa pagpapabakuna kontra COVID-19. Muli ako po si Paolo Medjones, disiplina muna ambasador na nagpapaalala. Huwag matakot magpabakuna. Bida ang may disiplina. Magparehistro at magpabakuna para ligtas ang pamilya, ligtas ang bayan. Disiplinadong Pilipino ay rehistrado para maging bakunado. The Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development, or DHSUD, is preparing for a smooth turnover of housing projects and programs to the next administration. Officials and concerned employees attended a four-day workshop in Clark, Pampanga to evaluate the department's performance and harmonize priorities for next coming years. The DHSUD aims to use the results of its evaluation as a reference to improve existing strategies and plans for the housing sector. The DHSUD personnel will also discuss actions for sustainability as envisioned in existing national plans and sectoral frameworks, especially the Philippine Development Plan and the National Housing and Urban Development Sector Plan 2040. The National Housing and Urban Development Sector Plan is a 20-year roadmap that envisions better, greener, and smarter human settlements and urban systems. DHSUD Secretary Eduardo del Rosario earlier said the roadmap will provide a continuity of housing programs for the next three administrations. The Philippine National Police on Monday denied the alleged red tagging of progressive individuals and groups, particularly by Muna Party List Representative Carlos Zarate. This following reports of a tarpaulin found in front of the Capas Municipal Police Station in Tarla, linking Zarate's name to the communist terrorist CPP and PA. PNP Chief General Leonardo Carlos said police have no control over who mounted the tarpaulin, especially since it was placed outside of the gated police station. Carlos reiterated that the PNP does not allow its personnel to use its facilities for political or social statements or towards disrespecting anyone. Earlier, National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict spokesperson Lorraine Badoy said the term red tagging is just a tool of front organizations of the CPP and PA to silence those who speak against them. The Duterte Legacy Caravan ventured to Kalinga Province on Sunday, providing government services and aid to more than 1,000 residents. The police regional office in the Cordillera Administrative Region, or CAR, said the Kalinga Police Provincial Office held the event with the theme Pagkakaisa ng Mamamayan at Pamahalaan Tungo sa Pagbangon, Kapayapaan at Kaunlaran. 25 government agencies provided free services. Among those were free circumcision services, free haircuts, distribution of seedlings, COVID-19 vaccination, processing of documents, awarding of livelihood starter kits, processing of driver's licenses, and enrollment for training. There was also a distribution of flyers and information material on the various services of the different agencies. The Clark International Airport expanded its operations as it officially soft launched on Monday its new terminal building. The new terminal greeted with a ceremonial water cannon salute the first departing and arriving flights from Jetstar Asia and Cebu Pacific. The new terminal is a joint project of the Department of Transportation and the Basis Conversion and Development Authority. This is the first hybrid public-private partnership under the Build, Build, Build program started and completed during the Duterte administration. Meanwhile, the Department of Tourism is seeing a boost in tourist arrivals in the coming months as Clark International Airport added more flights in its new passenger terminal beginning May 2nd. South Korea's Jeju Air and Jin Air will launch their Incheon Clark Incheon route. Other international flights include Singapore via Jetstar and Scoot, Doha via Qatar Airways, Air Asia, and Dubai via Emirates. Cebu Pacific and Philippine Airlines will also have flights operating at the new passenger terminal. 
Tourism Secretary Bernadette Romulo Puyat said, Clark is an emerging tourism hub that has great potential to bring huge gains for the tourism industry. Let's take another look at today's biggest stories. President Duterte finally orders to stop the operations of Isabong in the country. Filipino Muslims gathered to observe Idil Fitir or the end of Ramadan as President Duterte calls them to be models of goodwill and compassion for humanity. The Kamalek says it may declare the winners of the senatorial and partidist group race a week after the May 9 elections. And the Department of Justice warns that the witnesses who recanted their testimonies against Senator Laila de Lima may be liable for perjury. As Filipinos, we all have a vital role to play in preventing the spread of COVID-19. So remember, wear your face masks and face shields, wash your hands often, practice safe physical distancing, go out only for essential reasons, and get vaccinated as soon as possible to protect ourselves, our families, and the community. Together, we can beat COVID-19. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. For more news content, check our webpage or log on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also, watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, we tell stories that inspire change. I am William Theo. Good day, everyone.